Howdy folks! Uh, today we're looking at a light meter, or a lux meter. Um, I had ordered this a couple of months ago. It just came in the mail the other day. I completely forgot about it. You'll find a lot of these on the usual sources, Amazon, eBay. Uh, this is a peak meter brand, but the model number that you'd be interested in is 6612. Uh, you'll also find them by a company called Maztec. Hylic is another one. There might be a couple others as well. So anyone who's interested in one of these or have been looking at one of these 6612s, hopefully this uh, video will give you a little, uh, little more information on it. I actually wasn't even thinking of doing a video, but I've already had this out and used it a bit, and I'm actually surprised. I'm quite impressed with it. Um, so we'll just have a peek at it. Peak meter, peak, yeah, bad humor. Um, comes in this little vinyl case. Quality isn't spectacular, but what do you expect for 10 bucks? That's what I paid for this. It was it was on sale. That's kind of the only reason I bought it. But I've been wanting a, a meter. I think generally, though, online, these are around 20. Uh, but they're definitely worth it, I think, if you're in the market for a cheapy meter. Um, the instruction book that comes with it, or manual, is uh, unfortunately... Uh, not in English, um, at least with this one, maybe others do, but uh, I'm going to link uh, right here below in the description right now, uh, I'm going to link to uh, Peak Meter's site, uh, the product page for this, so you can look at it and you can actually download the English instructions. Um, I always like downloading the instructions or at least reading them before I purchase something just to get an idea of how it works to see if it's even something I would like. Uh, what else do we have here? Probably a calibration um, card of some sort, or maybe a warranty card. Probably a quick, quick reference or user card, who knows. Uh, interesting, on this card you'll see they inter they've got both the product brand Hylic and Peak Meter. So they might, uh, they might be parent, or one might be a parent company of the other, who knows. Uh, so, to the meter itself, as I said, I was quite impressed with it. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you how the accuracy is on this because I don't have another uh, Lux meter for a reference to compare it to. Um, for the little projects I want to use a light meter though for, uh, I don't really care about, you know, dead-on accuracy. I more or less want it to compare between different light sources. You know, if you're changing out to, from incandescence to LEDs, for example, to see if the new LEDs are giving you as much light as the incandescence did, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, that's my main uh, reason for even wanting one of these. Uh, but the meter itself, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Quality is nice. As you can see, it's got a built-in um, light meter cover, or not light meter, the light sensor. Uh, the display is, you know, it's a nice LCD, uh, high contrast display. It's not backlit or anything. Um, as far as functions go, you've got your, this is just a silicone membrane, typical uh, switch pad. Uh, you've got your power button. It does auto off after 10 minutes if, uh, if you're not using it. It's got, it auto, it auto ranges. When you turn it on, it's automatically into auto ranging. Um, but you can turn that to manual ranging as well. Uh, you probably notice that nine, it's a 2,000 count. We'll go back to auto here. Just hold it in to go back to auto. It's a 2,000 count, meaning that once you get to 2,000, it will drop a decimal place. Just get my flashlight on here and see if we can get that going. Almost there. There. And the other neat thing is it's actually got a, um, a bar graph. Not too sure why you'd want that on a light meter. You're usually not too interested in rapidly changing signals like you would be on a digital multimeter, but that's kind of cool. Zoom in a bit more. You've got a relative, so you can zero it out if you want to. Then read as if it counts down. Uh, it's also got a peak function, 
which will apparently store a, you know, a large, like say a flash. You've got a hold function and a zero function, so that's a calibrate. Uh, if you put the cover on, it seemed to be calibrated really well right out of the box. You can see it's reading zero with the cover on, but if you hold this down, it'll go into a calibration, ADJ, adjust, and that bar graph is actually used as kind of a process or a progress meter, but there we're calibrated. It's actually got two ranges, lux, which I assume most people would use. I don't know anyone who uses foot candles anymore, but you've got that option if you want it. And you've also got a min max, so it'll record the min and the max value. Uh, so pretty, um, pretty useful functions. And as far as the quality goes, like I said, uh, surprisingly decent. I wasn't expecting it. This, uh, this high visibility fluorescent orange, it's a, it's a softer plastic than the rest of the case. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's a nice meter to hold. I'm going to open it up now so we can see inside. I haven't seen inside. I like taking things apart. And that will generally give you a better idea of the, you know, the overall quality. So, I'll just do that now. Get a screwdriver out. What are these Phillips? Uh oh, it doesn't come with a battery. I've already put one in. But the first thing I noticed, which I was quite impressed with, is the battery cover. The screw actually goes into a brass uh, metal um, threaded insert. So, you're not going to be stripping that out if you're changing the battery all the time. And it takes a 9 volt, as you can see. It's a nice snug fit in there. Nice terminals, uh, not some wire uh, 9 volt plug. And these are all Phillips. And it looks like we've got four to take out. Just fast forward. Okay. Screws out. Okay, what are we missing here? I wonder if there's a fastener behind that cover. Oh geez, maybe we can't take it apart. It's probably glued in there. Well, let's see. Oh no, it's just a little it's just a little plug. Yep, sure enough. Another screw. Okay. I'll see if there's any wires connecting the back half to the front. Nope. Okay, so we got basically just two little circuit boards, PCB boards. I'm just going to pause it. I'm going to zoom in here. Got a couple of gold-plated springs for the battery contacts. There's our little uh, some piezo buzzer to make the noise. Little timing crystal, and what kind of uh, micro or processor do we have? Or not processor, microcontroller? Oh, geez, it's a Texas Instrument. Didn't expect that. Didn't expect a brand named. What is this? An M four thirty F four three seven. That's actually a good little microcontroller. Um, let's look at that online here. I'm kind of curious what that is. Just looking at the product specs here of this 430F437 microcontroller on Texas Instruments website. Uh, I never mentioned when we were looking at it on the uh, board that it's a quad flat pack. Uh, so that's a better way to uh, mount them. A little more expensive. So as far as the specs go, 16-bit ultra low power microcontroller, 32 kilobyte flash. 1024 RAM, and it looks like she'll support up to a 160 segment LCD. You can look all this up on your own. Uh, I'll just go over the description real quick. The MSP430 family of ultra low power microcontrollers. Uh, several devices, yeah. They, uh, the architecture combined with five power, low power modes is optimized to achieve extended battery life in portable measurement applications, which is exactly what it's being used in.
So, decent little microcontroller in this thing. Who knew? Okay, take these out. Okay, we've got all the screws out. And... Okay, so... How does this diffuser come off? Well, the outer ring, the little pins are melted on the back side of the PCB board, so we can't take that ring off. Does this little diffuser... Oh yeah, this pops out. And what do we have in there? Yep, it's a little, uh, little photodiode. Basically looks like a small uh, photovoltaic cell, which I guess is kind of what a photodiode is. Speaking of photodiodes, uh, here's a neat little trick that some people may not know about. I'm just going to pause it and put the camera in a different position. Okay, I was talking about photodiodes. Um, you can actually use a regular diode as a photodiode. This is just a regular white LED, a light emitting diode, and not only can you pump current into these to give off light, if you shine light on them, they'll actually produce current. Uh, so, what's positive is your long lead on these things. And if we look at our meter here, shine a light on this. And there we go, we're getting what, almost up to 0 0.4, 0 0.35 roughly volts. So, nothing exciting. Uh, but if you're ever in the need of a, uh, a photodiode, you could uh, you could raid your um, light LED drawer and use a regular light emitting diode. Anyways, let's get back to that meter. Uh, yeah, so nothing exciting there. Again, I'm kind of surprised they don't use a. Uh, photoresistor though. I don't know if that's if all uh, light meters use photodiodes. Maybe they are uh, maybe they register quicker. Maybe that's why they don't use a photoresistor. Not too sure. Anyways, I guess we gotta put this back in. Um, and now I'll take this board off so we can look under here, see what's going on under this board. It's got four Screws holding the PCB board down. Okay. What do we got here? Okay. No, oh, so nothing really exciting on the back back half. You've got your contacts for the uh, LCD display, which is using you know those standard rubberized what are they called? Zebra strips, I think. Um, nicely fit in there so you don't have to worry about misalignment when you put it back on. Um, standard silicone contact membrane. And then the little contact pads. So, all in all, uh, again, for 20 bucks, um, decent meter, in my opinion. Again, I don't know what, how accurate they are, and really I don't care. I'm using it as a comparison, as a light comparison tool more than, you know, needing exact, accurate uh, light output. One thing that is kind of neat, though, that I should, in the, in the instructions, they, right at the back of the instructions, they have a reference uh, that shows different... Um, you know, scenarios, you know, operating rooms, kitchens, labs, desks, that kind of thing, what uh, what the recommended lux reading should be, or foot candles, I suppose, and what they're showing in there, and you know, outside, daylight, uh, clouds, and the meter seems to be reading pretty accurate uh, to, to what they're saying, the normal reference 
range should be. So again, it's probably, it's good enough for what I need it for. Is it good enough for, you know, high quality photography work? Mm, who knows? Anyways, that's just my uh, thoughts on this thing. If anyone is um, considering buying them, uh, definitely the build quality is decent and the componentry was a surprise with that uh, with that TI Texas Instruments um, 430F 437 microcontroller. Cheers folks, have a good one.